So the first thing in any other business is motion 84 to change the name of Afghanistan Medical Students Association, RMC Afghanistan, to Afghanistan Medical Students Association, AMSA Afghanistan, proposed by RMC Afghanistan. Do you want to explain? RMC, are you here? You can also just type in chat, no. But they already confirmed to me and that they submitted this. RMC Afghanistan, are you here? Yeah, they are in the call. We communicated earlier. Okay, so I'll take this as confirmation that you do not want to uh, explain, but you confirm that this is your motion. So we're gonna proceed uh, and then we go to seconders. <laughs> we did Europe, you cannot second. Uh, but we're gonna go with some AMSA, okay, AMSA Austria. And Austria, we'd like to second this motion. Okay. Do we have any amendments? Okay, I don't see any amendments. Do we have a direct negative? No, therefore this motion passes Nemo Contra. And as a point of information for everyone to read the fine print, so uh, in the OGA guidelines for this, this GA, I put in a clause that basically uh, says that an agreement between the General Assembly and uh, the chairperson can uh, decide basically to alter the process based on some unexpected circumstances. And in case Afghanistan was not able to join us here in this plenary, I would have used that clause and uh, asked you for formal approval that their submission is just counted as uh, submission and we do not need them to explain in the plenary itself. Uh, I think that's a useful clause and you should all be aware that something like that can exist in an online setting still it's for this reason specifically. Okay, so motion 85 to adopt the mandate of task force evaluation and structure. So uh, as this is again a mandate, we're gonna do the same thing we did yesterday. I'm gonna open a speakers list and everyone can have some time to talk about that. So we have Sapko going first. And then I can see Egypt. Thank you so much. I'm reading this statement on behalf of Sapko. Dear animals, we would like to respond to yet another mandate towards the supervising council without our involvement. As stated yesterday, the Supervising Council over the past year has seen a huge increase in the work directed toward us um, in the belief that we are able to investigate and find solutions for many problems in IFMSA. This is very problematic development and something that will affect not only the work, our health and the priorities of the Supervising Council, but also the extension of the Federation as a whole. We would like animals to consult with anybody before mandating them in order to understand whether this is something with the scope of what the body is aimed for. In this specific case, we were never consulted nor asked for input regarding the mandate. Furthermore, in the explanation given, we have somehow influenced the functioning, but at the same time we are seen as the independent body, which should give an independent recommendations. Therefore, we believe us coordinating this mandate would be a conflict of interest as it could influence the outcome. As discussed two days ago in the president sessions, the supervising council, EB nor TU cannot be in the solution to every problem. Animals must take responsibility for these issues. In the original discussion about task forces, EB and SAPCO were left out intentionally due to have an independent assessment. Also, the current objectives are vague and are open for different interpretations, which makes the mandate not uh, might not have the intended outcomes. Furthermore, the current suggested st sub sub SVG structure is up for interpretation and also puts another task on the EB. 
We therefore call upon animals to once again reflect on the mandate to supervising council and our capacity and urge the Federation to stop seeing us as a magical solution. The consultation and advice before submitting a mandate would help all parties involved to have a more comprehensive and united understanding. We believe that these discussions about the future of the task forces are important and relevant to issue, um, to the issue we have been facing with low engagement. However, as seen numerous times, creating a task force or mandate is not the only solution to solving problems and issues in our federation. And we urge animals to take an active role in forming the federation instead of putting the responsibilities on others. Thank you. Okay. Um, I think it's Egypt. And thank you. This is Mena from ICMF Egypt. I will start by first reading the statement that we had, had sent on the server yesterday, and then I will go to replying to the subsequent statement. Um, so I'm reading the statement on behalf of ICMF Egypt, ICMF Poland, ICMF Angel, and Lampic Lebanon. Um, ICMF task forces have served as an independent body concerned with fulfilling many mandates addressing areas of concerns across the years. However, Many of the task forces had lower efficacy than anticipated, struggling to achieve the desired outcomes and being reproposed for multiple years. Reviewing records of multiple previous task forces over the past years, ongoing task force records submitted, and consulting with current task force members, there seems to be recurring concerns that hinder their effectiveness. To begin with, Lack of members' awareness regarding task forces and low participation has pushed us to open several calls, delaying the, delaying the selection and activation of task forces, and such delay of timeline that could be for months has affected performance of many task forces. This is also reflected in the commitment of members after their selection in task forces, as well as NMO's participation in giving inputs when task forces calls for it. Moreover, Many task forces reported that members were confused regarding their job description and expected outcomes once appointed to the task force. There seemed to be variable interpretations regarding whether task forces should stick to the mandate in the proposed motion or may perform as they see suitable, whether they have the authority to perform certain tasks and whether they should refrain from action that may overlap with the IT's job description. We have seen this particularly with the overlap in the task force GER mandate and the gender equality global priority. And it has been confusing to all parties. It is essential that this is clarified so parties proposing task forces are aware while drafting the mandate what can be included. Additionally, subco interpretation regarding EBTO involvement in task forces has changed over the past years. And although this year EB are only contact persons for task forces, their degree of involvement and input on decision making remains variable between different task forces. With such restrictions, the task force position is no longer independent, but is limited by actions of TOs, IT, and interpretations of subco and EB. All of the previously mentioned points have been recurring concerns mentioned in multiple previous task force records and shared by current task forces as well. And we believe it is time to address them in order to ensure task forces are more efficient in delivering expected outcomes for the advancement of IFMSA. Um, this is the end of the statement that we have previously sent to the server. I will continue to reply to the statement made by the SAPO. I'd like to first clarify um, uh, multiple points, um, the beginning of which uh, what we included in the mandate. The mandate only asks SAPCO to open the call for the small working group, select members, and only supervise or provide information when needed. The mandate does not request subco to coordinate the task force or to be involved in the decision making at any point. We, choose, we chose to do this just because we felt like there is no existing body that can open the small working group other than the EBTO, which should be, and task forces are meant to be independent from EBTO. So the only body that we felt was independent within IFMSA and closest to the concept and similar structure of task forces would be the subco. This is why we chose to ask the subco to assist us in only opening the call for small working group, selecting members, and just supervising or providing assistance if members need to find some sort of information that they cannot get access to. So this is the first point that we'd like to clarify. The second point we'd like to clarify is before submitting such mandate, we made sure to bring this discussion to all parties. 
we have raised this discussion during the last president session in order to make sure that EB is involved, SUPCO is involved, NMOs are involved, and we called from input of all parties present within the pres this president session. We took all inputs into consideration and we previously um, wanted the small working group to be coordinated by SUPCO, but we changed this following the input given by SUPCO, EB and animals within the discussion and president session as to make sure that we do not burden SUPCO with the work, but rather request their assistance in initiating the small working group. The last thing we'd like to reiterate is the composition of the small working group. The small working group, uh, the composition of task forces is something that has always posed as a struggle because sometimes we were unable to find members that fulfill this requirement, which is why we chose for this small working group to have a bit more flexibility in the selection. And um, if you go to the mandate, uh, I'm not sure if you can show this on the screen, please. It says that we can have one to two EB or TO current or previous EB or TO members. This is to ensure that the perspective and inputs of people who are leading this federation are taken into perspective one member with task force experience and two to three animal representatives so this is us making sure that the current eb and to do not carry an extra burden if there is a previous eb and to interested to be part of this task force this ensures that someone with task force experience is included and this also ensures that we have representation from animals all of this is done to make sure that all inputs are taken into perspective because this is our number one priority. And to make sure that we um, ease the concern that may come to anyone's mind, we have already been approached by three previous TO members not serving in this term who are interested to participate in the small working group. And there are four NMOs who are part of this um, suggestion or part of this mandate. So we're sure between the four of us, we would definitely encourage our members to apply. And we are confident that the small working group structure would not pose as an issue to beginning the work on this mandate. Um, to conclude, we encourage all animals to, like Subco mentioned, actively participate in solving the issues of the Federation. We do not see Subco as the magical solution. However, we reach out to Subco when we feel like we could need their assistance in making sure that this evaluation remains independent and does not fall uh, under another obligation, whether to EB or to Subco. Thank you. Okay, um, Associate Metonisha, the Subco. As a reminder, this is the same process we did last time, but I'm giving you a space for discussion regarding mandates. And they, there was no other space to discuss. Uh, hi, thank, hi, thank you, Nebosha. Actually, we have a statement about uh, last, uh, last night's uh, plenary, but it's not regard. Okay, okay so, yeah. Can, yeah. Everything, so uh, everything regarding this mandate goes now. Any other statement goes after we adopt subco report. Like all statements that you guys want, mm -hmm. right? They go after CCC report. Okay, it's report. not so, about this mandate. <laughs> okay, perfect. So, um, subco then. Um, thank you so much. Um, as we mentioned in the statement, we are happy that this is discussed and we are very happy that it's brought up. However, we do not agree on that this was discussed with any of us because it was mentioned in president sessions and already done. Two subco members were very strongly suggesting not to put this mandate and we were never consulted after that about the mandate. Um, and also, secondly, we would like to remind that if just because people say they have an interest, it doesn't mean that they will be in this, like in this kind of um, small working group. And doing this, like saying that people are interested, it doesn't mean that they will work and they will have an outcome from it. Um, so we will make sure, we will remind everyone that if you're voting for this, you might also cause like that we create a small working group, we don't get an outcome. And we believe that this should be a discussion regarding this topic. And there's other different solutions, such as for example, TO goals for the future or other ways of, tackling this issue because we do not believe it should fall under EBTO um, or SUPCO to do this um, because it's mostly it comes from a lack of animals willing to um, be part of task forces and small working groups and therefore we do not see us as the main responsible for coordinating taking care or even being the role of as like just being there because it's uh, even if it sounds like a little work it's still 
extra burden put on Subco and someone need to prioritize that in that way, just to clarify it. Okay, so I'm not gonna allow that we have a bilateral in front of 200 people. So uh, one more reply from each. And then if nobody else wants to go into this, we are stopping the debate and, and moving on. Uh, so please be concise with your last statements about this uh, mandate and then we'll proceed in case nobody else wants to speak. Okay, I promise Egypt and assume Sapko would like to hear a final word. And then if nobody else, we proceed. Thank you, Naboja. I don't think we have a lot more to add. We'd like to clarify once more that the mandate does not ask Sapko to coordinate the small working group. The mandate does not ask Subco to be involved in the work of the small working group. The mandate only asks Subco to open a call for the small working group, select members, and provide assistance in case they need information. Um, we would also like to say that if every time we initiate some work, our excuse to not initiate it would be that we're not sure if members are going to be involved, then we're never going to get anything done. Um, we're calling for this small working group because we feel like task forces are not working efficiently anymore and we're looking to find solutions. Um, having members motivated to dedicate time to this task before we mandate it, this is just something we're doing from our side to make sure it's not an effort that we're wasting again. And to make sure that rather than continuing for years from now to propose task forces that are not efficient, it is time we find a solution and opening a task force to find a solution on task forces is definitely not the way forward. Um, so yeah, we just like to reiterate that yes, ensuring that members are interested to partake in this discussion is essential. Just like Subco asked if his animals responsibilities to work on this. Um, I don't think there is anything else we'd like to add. We hope that the mandate is read very carefully for all parties to understand exactly what we're asking and who is being responsible. Because um, contrary to Subco's recommendation, we do not think that um, it is correct um, for this to fall under the responsibility of ED or TO or to ask TO to have a TO goal. We believe TO already have so much on their hands for the remainder of the term. The way we see as most efficient without burdening Subco, EB or TO, and ensuring all parties. Okay, you got muted at the end. Um, I'm not sure where exactly I was muted. Last five seconds. Okay. Um, MSI India. You have something to say on the topic and then sub. Am I saying you? Um, am I audible? Yep. Perfect. Um, dear animals, I have to officials and observers. Uh, I'm Purva Prabha Patil, the current uh, president of MSCI India, and uh, here goes the statement. First and foremost, uh, we would like to thank all those involved in the discussions pertaining to our animal over the past few weeks. Uh, MSCI uh, India? The I, many conversations I, I've personally MSI been a India, part of. I have to interrupt you. Uh, is this the statement regarding the mandate being discussed right now, or this a general statement? This is a general statement. Okay, so can I please ask you that later on when we have a speakers list, we're gonna have a speakers list for everyone and that you speak then. And now we only focus on the mandate at hand that is being discussed, but this is the one about small working group. I hope that is fine. Yes, thank you. Okay, thank you. So Sapko, and then we proceed to work. Um, thank you so much. Um, lastly, we would just mention that we believe that the timeline concerning this um, means that people applying now would need to be committed to one year and we do not see this like uh, mandate as it is um, acceptable. And we, as we already mentioned, we are against this because we believe if a mandate is mandated to someone, no matter how much work it is, um, it should be consulted before. And therefore we will er like hope and urge animals to please 
um, ex think about this before voting for a mandate without um, the consultant of the person that is mandated. Thank you so much. Okay. I believe everyone was heard and you got the information from everyone. So since nobody else other than the two parties relevant specifically for this one to speak, we are just going to proceed to the motion itself. Okay. So motion 85 to adopt the mandate on task forces evaluation and restructure proposed by IFMC Egypt and MC Lebanon. Do you want to further explain? No, thank you. I think we explained all that. Okay. Do we have a seconder for this motion? IFMC Jordan? IFMC Jordan would like to second this motion. Okay. Uh, do we have any amendments for this motion? I don't see any amendments. Do we have a direct negative for this motion? AMSA USA? MC USA would like to do a direct negative. Okay. We don't want to. Do we do we have an alternative motion in the room? Okay. So Banka, do you have the vote? Yep. So I'm opening the vote. Mm, now. Mm, now you should be able to vote. We already have 29 animals that have already voted, 35, 39, 41, 47. Forty nine, fifty six, fifty eight, fifty nine, and since we had around sixty animals voting in the first informal vote that we had at the very beginning. I will be giving 10 more seconds for you to vote. So here we go with a countdown. So I'll be giving five more seconds. Four, three, two, one, and I'm closing the vote. So in total, we had 65 animals voting out of 105, and the results are the following ones. We had 26 votes in favor, 24 votes against, and 15 abstentions. Okay. Therefore, this motion does not fail specifically, does not pass. That didn't reach two thirds majority. Okay. And that is everything for our any other business point of the agenda. Now we have the adoption of the final report of the CCC. <coughs> motion 86. Uh, to adopt the final report to the Constitutional Credential Committee for the 17th uh, General Assembly March meeting proposed by Constitutional Credential Committee. Uh, CCC, is this motion valid? Okay, so two things. First, we need a break because we have to add the two previous motions and the amended version of the report and share it.
so maybe like five minutes just to add them. Um, and second, I mean, we are not sure since we submitted this motion, so we feel that we are in a conflict of interest, which reminded validity, because usually it was submitted by EB. Um, so the question here is to the chairperson, how would you solve this situation? Because we have no idea how to solve that, since we are in the COI, to determine the validity that a motion submitted by ourselves. I can tell you my opinion, and you can take that if you want. Uh, and well, I would say that CCC as a proposal does not exist. It is Constitutional Credential Committee, but I'll let it slide, and I'll say this is a valid motion submitted on time. Okay, so you think this motion is valid, Chairperson? Yep. Thank you for that. Uh, I guess we will go with that option, then just give us some time to amend it. Okay. Uh, you can also orally amend, uh, say what you're amending and just send Yeah, it. but we want to share it in the report so it's like clear to everyone. Like just give us like three minutes. Maximum. Okay, you get them. <clears throat> right after I'm opening a speaker's list so we can sort of prepare that. Who would like to be on a speaker's list that will go after the CCC report is voted on? So raise your hands. We will record all those that want to be on the speakers list and uh, all of the sort of statements that should go at the end. Yes, CCC report is the second to last uh, motion. The last one is the adjournment of the plenary. But before that, we need to have a speakers list and all the statements will be read there. Uh, so, uh, Limsa, Lithuania, I have missed Poland, Smams, Malaysia. Uh, Omar and Blanca, uh, I can see the PCB, uh, Omar. So we need to write of that now. Okay, uh, how was it going? We um, get Limsa. Yeah, Asushamid. I Poland. Poland, yeah. Malaysia. This is from Tunisia. Uh, BPPCB. Net, uh, Italy. Is anyone not on the list right now? Um, us, Omar, and myself. <laughs> yeah, let's see who else is there. And um, yeah, our specific. Yep. We sent our report. We just want to ask the VPM to approve it to the server so that animals can just like have a fast look before going to the motion. On it. Thank you, VPM. Okay, I hope we have everyone. Now, uh, all those uh, VPCBs here. Yeah. So, uh, all those that think that their statement should go as the last one, please type in chat. Like they, they think that their statement should be one of the closing statements. Please write in chat. Uh, so we have okay. so in the, like by last I mean those thank you statements that typically go if there are any of those like those are the statements you typically would like to have everything at one. So let's see uh, we have X. So IX, Theo, uh, MSI India, and IFMSI South India. Uh, that one, I don't know. Okay. The one from AMSA is from the OST, not the NMO itself, I think. 
AMSA Austria, that is correct. It is the online support team and not AMSA Austria. Okay, uh, RD Asia Pacific. Uh, you still want to go? Okay, we got, let me see, Panama. I think that would be it, as uh, MSI India was the, the last one. This... <laughs> oh my God. Okay. So, MSI India sent it first, so they'll go first. They'll go before South India, and the rest of you, yep, you're going like this. <clears throat> and I will go sometime, I don't know, probably up to the end. So uh, CCC, uh, you sent it, ready? Yes, a request, can we be before the TO on the speakers list? Or after the TO before US chairperson is also fine. Okay, plenary team privileges. So uh, <laughs> going with the motion itself. Okay, so. Motion 86, to adopt the final report of the Constitutional Credential Committee for the 17th General Assembly March meeting proposed by Constitutional Credential Committee. Do you want to explain? Um, no, it's already shared on the survey yesterday. Okay, do we have a seconder? Who didn't I pick? Uh, okay, let's go with FMS Taiwan. Do we have any amendments for this? CCC, yes, we have an amendment from the CCC. So basically there are two amendments. The first is the motion from Afghanistan that passed Nemo Contra. And the second motion was the mandate which by, from IFMSA Egypt with the subco, which failed by two third majority. And those amendments are already added in the final version that was sent to the server like minutes ago. Okay, uh, Does do you accept as proposer? I guess we do. <laughs> okay, uh, FMS Taiwan, the second, do you accept? Yes, we do. Okay, so this is incorporated. Do we have any further amendments? Sisa Mitoli, you still have your hand up? Hand up. Okay. Uh, do there are no further amendments? Uh, do we have a direct negative? I don't see any. Therefore, this passes the more contract. Can we say we're happy and so Austria didn't direct negative that? <laughs> I guess you can, since you did. Uh, so just as a point of information now for everyone, uh, if there is any other vote other than the closing, uh, we will need to reopen the CCC point of the agenda and readopt their report because their report needs to include everything. So uh, we're gonna proceed with the speakers list and uh, yeah, it's gonna take a while. So yeah, stop sharing um, the list. You saw it already. I'm gonna share it here again. So it's in chat, but we're gonna go with that. So plenary secretary and chairperson, you can go. Okay, this statement will be given by myself and Blanca, the vice chair. Dear IFMSA family, the day concludes yet another online general assembly, another meeting where we could not gather physically, another meeting that serves to remind us all to never take anything for granted. We have all been doing our best to adapt to virtual settings, and it is safe to say we have been doing relatively well considering the global circumstances. However, let us make no mistake about it. The past year has been incredibly challenging, to say the least, and we are all eager for the situation to change as soon as possible. For years and years before the pandemic, we, have, we had already been discussing the issue of mental health within our federation. We have had task forces, small working groups, and entire teams working on this topic. And we had not been overlooking how mental health taxing uh, our work will be. However, this past year has unfortunately 
made things even more difficult and merely fulfilling our most basic tasks has been more and more difficult and has become something worth celebrating. The reason we are giving this statement is not to claim that we have some sort of a magical solution to this problem. This is an issue one cannot solve alone. Rather, it is something we must all come together as an organization to address. We are delivering this statement, nonetheless, to express our deepest appreciation to every single person within our federation who has managed to maintain their motivation and mental health during these testing times. With such troubling circumstances, gratitude is all we have left and it is the, la the least we could do for each other. To the IFMSA officials, all the regional teams, all the international teams, task forces, small working groups, plenary teams, and simply anyone who is still active within IFMSA, thank you for persisting and persevering. If you will allow us to mention a few names, we will like to extend our appreciation to some of, the ho to, to some of those, those who have not been receiving the recognition they deserve. While most of you here today are familiar with members of the plenary team, such as Nebosha, Omar, the CCC, uh, Gita, Haider, Esgi, Saniya, and Angelo, and myself, because of our participation in the plenaries, there are other people backstage who have been working relentlessly to make this March meeting the success that it has been. Firstly, allow us to mention my beloved secretary team, Al Amin and Randa from Medicine Sudan, Hussam from IFMC Iraq, and Sorina from FASMR Romania. I cannot express how grateful I am to have worked with each and every one of you. You have been exemplary in your dedication, punctuality, and professionalism. Thank you very much for your hard work, and let me warn you in advance I am only attending the next August meeting if one of you is the plenary secretary. We would like to applaud our hardworking returning officers team, Kenneth from FMS Taiwan, Camila from IFMSA Peru, and Fatima from Medicine Sudan. They have been allowing you to all have access to plenaries and they have been helping you out with all the logistical issues. Moreover, they have not only been supported you, but they have supported the whole plenary team. Personally, as they have been my team for these few weeks, I want to thank them all for their assistance, motivation, and dedication in every single moment, not only related to work, but mentally wise as well. Thank you very much for all the work you have been doing. And I assure you, you have been the best team a GA could ever have, and myself as well. Our dear Federation, we know you are all far too exhausted for any additional tasks besides your current commitments, but allow us to request from you just one more thing. Before your term ends, we would like each of you to tell your colleagues that you appreciate their hard work. It has been a rough time for all of us, so please use, use this opportunity to text your fellow TO members, email your IT, call your officers, this time not to give them more tasks, but merely to let them know that you recognize them and you recognize how hard they have been pushing through the past 12 months. Praying for humanity, our federation, and every soul affected by the global circumstances. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, my plenary secretary and vice chairperson. Uh, don't forget to record the statement support. Yeah, I will send this to the secretary. <laughs> Uh, so we have Limsa going next. Yes, so I would also like to read a statement regarding mental health during GA. Uh, they are the most, they are EB and TO. First of all, we would like to thank the plenary team, EB, TO, Subco, CCC, FC, session team members, support persons, and all other individuals who have contributed to organizing such a wonderful event. We are thankful for having an opportunity to express our opinions, and be involved in our beloved Federation's decision-making process, even in these difficult times. With this statement, we would like to express our deep concerns regarding participants' mental health and well-being during this online GA. I have been state advocates for mental health issues for so many years to find the best approaches to tackle this challenge in the most proper way. IFMSA and its members have conducted many activities, opened task forces, and adopted policy documents regarding this topic. 
we would like to bring your attention to a specific sentence from IFMSC policy document on mental health adopted in March meeting 20. We recognize the global burden on mental health conditions and call for the implementation of effective strategies to promote mental health and well-being. Nevertheless, being medical students advocate for this topic worldwide, we have found ourselves in some conditions that are not healthy for human nature during this GA. Long sitting hours in front of the screens, even not being able to have lunch and plenary resource sessions that last five or, or six hours without the proper amount of breaks are especially damaging both to our mental and physical health. Additionally, during this supply GA, most participants have to deal not only with the GA, but also with their university's duties. Hence, the high workload and GA agenda discrepancies often leave us almost no time for our mental health and well-being. It is worth mentioning that during this GA, we have observed multiple times when the information for the plenaries was shared to animals so close to the voting that the delegations had to accept rushed, not well-informed decisions without properly consulting their delegations. We want to highlight that this often leads to overwhelming outcomes, misinterpretation of the topics, and even greater damage to participants' mental health. Decision-making is the core value of our federation and every NMO should be able to make informed decisions at all times. We want to remind everyone that by advocating for something, we should start with ourselves. The members of IFMSC constitute this federation so the most important and key element, even during the GAs, should be the well-being of our members. We once again thank the plenary team, EB, TO, Subco, and NMOS for trying to find creative solutions regarding this topic. Their effort is being seen, and we think we are moving in the right direction. Nonetheless, we urge everyone to pay even more attention to this topic, especially during online GAs. We believe that by taking proper actions, it is possible to reduce this continuous problem and conduct our discussions and voting in a more efficient manner to make well-informed decisions for the sake of our federation. On behalf of Limsi Lithuania and on Portugal, IFMSC Serbia, PMSC Palestine, Associate Met Tunisia, BVMD Germany, and IFMSC Czech Republic. Thank you. Thank you. And we go next uh, with IFMSC Poland. Dear FMSA family, I would like to thank you in advance for listening to our statement. FMSA Poland would like to use the General Assembly as a platform to express the concerns of human rights violations caused by the imposed abortion ban in Poland. The situation regarding abortion has been a topic of debate for a long time. In 1993, abortion became legal in cases of rape, a threat to pregnancy, individual's health, and life and fetal deformation. There were ongoing movements to limit abortions since then, but they were ineffective until October 2020. This is when the highly politicized Constitutional Tribunal ruled that abortion in case of fetal deformation is contradictory to the Polish Constitution, therefore making it illegal. The same day, the protests started, forming the biggest social movements since strikes against the communist regime in the 80s. There were multiple cases of extreme police brutality and arrests. Currently, there is a huge campaign with disguising propaganda posters by anti chinese activists who try, try to plant guilt in those who want to give people the power over their own bodies. Many pregnant people are being forced to carry the, to term and give birth to malformed fetuses that will most likely die shortly after birth, posing more mental health burden and pain to affected people. Furthermore, there is a lack of psychological support for pregnant persons during the pregnancy and postpartum period. Help and support from the government to children and adults with disabilities is very limited. There is poor access to comprehensive health care, lack of rehabilitation programs, and insufficient financial support. As there is no aid for a child with a disability after it's born, it is clear that the well-being of people with disabilities is not an intention of this ruling. We also want to reiterate that this ban will also deepen social inequalities. Abortion abroad are more, uh, abortions abroad are more available for people who can afford some days of work, travel and service expenses, and most importantly, have awareness of the availability of such services. This means that unwanted pregnancies will need to be continued for those who cannot afford to go abroad or do not have knowledge of abortion in neighboring countries. 
Moreover, this will push some individuals into clandestine abortions, putting them at serious health risk. In this light, numerous civic initiatives were established that aim to promote self-managed pharmacological abortion through a reliable resource. This gives hope that abortion can be available for people despite their financial status and legal restrictions. However, this remains a saddening issue that abortion services rely on the work of NGOs, not on the government. Adding to this, there are legal consequences for people who help this other abortions, example given lending money, limiting the range of work of NGOs, individuals, but also larger countries to the maintenance of stigma. Moreover, this puts barriers to FMSA Poland's work, but also causes frustration to us as medical students who know we cannot provide all necessary services to their patients and take care of their health in the most professional way. Additionally, with, we have limited access to contraception, constraining our freedom of choice. Since July 2017, morning after pill became available on prescription, it resulted in a dramatic decrease in access to contraception. According to European Contraception Atlas, Poland is the only country going backwards in the case of contraceptive access, which ranks worst in Europe. Additionally, the existence of conscientious objection for MDs in Polish law builds another wall to contraceptive access, especially. In 2019, we needed we need to face the fact of manning barricades once due to the first reading of the Stop Pedophilia Bill. Any action considering prevention of STIs, safer sex strategies, or usage of contraception would be banned to be taken at schools under threat of five-year imprisonment. Happily, this bill didn't pass. We as FMSA Poland try to fill the educational gap in CSE in our country, conducting many campaigns, even the COVID, during the COVID-19 time, but it's insufficient after almost 30 years of lack of evidence informed CSE free of outmoded preconceptions and religion impact, which requires a system solution in school curricula. With this statement, we wish to bring this to NMO's attention to solve the obstacles that we are facing and thank all NMO's and individuals who supported us in our advocacy efforts. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Paul, for the statement. And now, it's now it's Malaysia. Thank you, Chairperson. I will be sharing a statement on vaccine inequity. Dear IFMSA family, to date, more than 350 million doses of the COVID-19 vaccine have been given globally. While this is a huge step in our global battle to curb the spread of COVID-19, it has come to our attention that vaccine rollouts in advanced economies are largely outpacing those in emerging and developing economies. This could spell disaster for global vaccination efforts as the world's poorest and most vulnerable groups are put at risk. In the recent WHO Executive Board meeting, Dr. Tedros, the Director General of the WHO, referred to this as a catastrophic moral failure. The access to affordable, high-quality vaccines is an, is an important prerequisite for universal immunization coverage. With vaccine demand still vastly outstripping supply, lopsided distribution could ultimately prolong the pandemic, fuel the evolution of new potentially vaccine-evading variants, and drag down the economies of both rich and poor, vaccinated and unvaccinated nations alike. SMAMS Malaysia would like to urge all NMOs to take actions within our capacity to voice out this inequity. We believe that as a youthful federation, we have a role to play to ensure that the access to COVID-19 vaccines are accessible and affordable to everyone. We reiterate that no one is safe until everyone is safe. We would also like to take this opportunity to thank the EB, plenary team, and the CCC for their hard work in making this online general assembly a success. Thank you, and we hope to be able to meet you in person soon. Thank you. And next, we have a social imagination. Thank you. Um... This statement is on violence communication. Dear animals, dear EBTO, dear IFMSA family, we would like to thank everyone for proactively engaging in the discussions around motions 80 and 81. We are glad to see that, in, that many animals are, uh, and other government uh, governing bodies of IFMSA had the chance to their voices and for their relief. In the end, to exchange ideas and opinions that allow the federation to first follow the discussion points in plenary we would like to highlight animals did not receive any stance or action so plan you are breaking up a little between bit between imsa I'm, I'm sorry uh, should i start again from the beginning or uh, yep 
Okay. Um, but I, I think you need to fix your DIT, issue first. DHOEB members, the IFMSA. I suggest you close. From the uh, signed animals. Yep, uh, anyone can, if there's someone else. Is it fine here? Uh, uh, I don't know. No, Is no, it it's... fine here? Do you hear me? Yep, now it's better. I close everything else and yeah, turn off your camera and I think it will. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you. Dear, dear NMOs, dear EBTO members, dear IFMSA family, we would like to thank everyone for pro proactively engaging in the discussion around Motion 80 and 81. We are glad to see that many NMOs and other governing bodies of IFMSA had the chance to raise their voices and stand for their beliefs. In the end, it is this opportunity to exchange ideas and opinion that, are, that allow the Federation to prosper. Following the discussion points raised in Plenary 5A, we would like to highlight that we animals did not receive any stance or, plan or action plan to be carried out by the EBTO since the issues between um, MSI India and uh, IFMSA South India were raised on the animal server. Since almost a month ago, we had received a significant number of emails regarding the subject, some of them in including several allegations that in no way reflects, reflect the value of our federation. Many statements on the same topic were already ma made uh, during the general, uh, this general assembly, but we believe it's never too much to say it again. There, there can be no space for discrimination in, IFM, in IFMSA. Democratic process, transparency, and equal opportunities are some of the core values of our federation, and should the, and should the lack of it um, be reported by anyone. Actually, it's not enough to be the non-discriminatory, it's necessary to be anti-discrimination. Due to the absence of proper discussion of this matter until the, the very last days in, the, in this General Assembly and the lack of clarification from EBTO on how they are tackling and planning to follow up the matter, CISM Italy and AMSA Austria shared the concerns that most likely many animals had also had as they should, they refused to ignore the possibility of having systematic discrimination within animals, which resulted in the two mandates that were discussed yesterday during the plenary 5A. That moment was the very first one when all the animals had the opportunity to hear all the involved parties. Since no update from the EBTO was given or any intention of working on this were shown before, we find that this does not align with the transparency we wish for uh, we wish for in our federation this entire situation has affected our delegations both emotionally and mentally during the general assembly and as mentioned before we did not feel that this issue was addressed accordingly until amsa austria and sism italy brought up the mandate proposals moreover the referred proposers had meetings and consultations several hours long with involved parties before proposing the mandates starting with south india and Sai india to get the full picture and then with subco vpm and rd asia pacific even though some of these parties say that were not consulted we would like to emphasize the weight and seriousness of these issues between the two organizations which is system italy and amsa austria stepped up to draw attention in order to seek the resolution and develop solutions which address, which address the concerns and goals of both parties. As the General Assembly did not mandate the VPM and the RD Asia Pacific and the SEPCO, we entrust them to still work on these issues and acknowledge their pro, acknowledge, and we acknowledge their proposed alternative methodology. Furthermore, we'd like to reiterate that we should uphold by our Federation values and have a zero tolerance policy for discrimination, racism, and any other form of harassment. Therefore, we should act when such allegations are made to maintain a safe, confidential, transparent, accountable, and encouraging environment. Since some of us may not have understood the meaning of the concept of white savior complex, we think it's better to share with you the definition as per the Collins Dictionary. And I quote, usually degradatory term for a white person who helps or has helped non-white people and may feel morally uh, superior for doing or having done so, end quote. How can a spirit of solidarity based on a call to action from one of the involved parties be interpreted as white savior complex and result in receiving discriminatory labels? It is disheartening to say the least that the discussion that took place and the interventions made by the animals were labeled as, labeled as white savior complex. We were saddened to hear such assumptions and accusations coming from the IFMSA leadership when we all believe 
in the IFMSA principles and values and work to uphold them so that the Federation pursues its aims without political, religious, social, racial, national, sexual, gender, or any other discrimination, and that it promotes humanitarian ideals. Therefore, it is unfair to affirm such accusations towards the animals simply based on the assumed ethnicity and history of animals, countries, and regions contributing to the discussion. The shared statement is aggressive and unethical, imposes racial divisions, and is detrimental to the safe space that everyone is trying to create and have. Such responses put the animals in a difficult position where they will hesitate to speak for what they deem is fair in fear of being judged uh, on their race rather than the worth of the discussion point. We are disappointed and distressed that we are faced with microaggressions, the modern form of racism, when the IFMSA leadership and animals are encouraged to work together to create an inclusive environment where people feel safe to speak up and share their opinions and concerns. As IFMSA advocates for animals to actively participate in the discussions of important topics during general assembly, such accusations, especially by the IFMSA leadership, are just not acceptable as they are discriminatory and discouraging. To conclude, we understand that this March meeting has been very long and exhausting, and we would like to extend our thanks to the EBTO sessions team, plenary team, and every single person who made sure our gathering amongst this pandemic was still possible. We hope that all officials and animals continue to foster a safe environment based on mutual respect, supporting one another and working towards achieving the IFMSA's ultimate vision. With the understanding that we're all trying our best to work for an improved democratic and cooperative future of IFMSA, you can always count, uh, count on us. On behalf of, QM, of QMSA Qatar, and in Portugal, Associate Tunisia, and in France, and IFMSA Qatar. Thank you. Thank you all for your statement. Just to be clear, this was a statement by all of them together. So next one is Sisam Italy. Hi everybody, Sisam Italy here. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can. Okay, thank you. If I'm not, if you cannot hear me anymore, please let me know and I don't know, I will do something, something probably. Okay, so. Uh, I will read this statement. Uh, it is about the mandate that we proposed with AMSA Austria yesterday, and I will read it, me as the animal president and my VP, Erika. Dear IFMSA, we are taking this opportunity to speak because we are really dispirited and demoralized by what happened yesterday during the plenary session. We don't mind that our mandates were rejected, but being called colonialists in front of the General Assembly by our leadership, the very people we elected to represent us, was traumatizing. The constructive criticism offered during the plenary, however gradually it was sometimes given, was appreciated and integrated as best as possible. This intervention, however, was designed to make us feel small, to make us be quiet, based on the erroneous assumption that all our delegation and, and animal members are from a certain racial and cultural background. Two of our dearest tenets are inclusivity and democracy. This is why when the slightest suspicion of any animal not abiding to these tenets arises, we think that each and every one of us should be concerned. We will try to address this situation again in the future and we will look for an opportunity for dialogue with the EBTO about what happened to sort things out, as we are sure it is derived from a huge misunderstanding. In any case, we hope that the EBTO will work to clarify the situation, get to the bottom of these allegations and accusations, and help them say India and I from say South India to sort out their disputes and find a solution for their conflict. We appreciated the detailed plan of the VPM, the RDA the Pacific, and we hope it will be put in action and we hope animals will be properly updated. Finally, we would like to quote again the paragraph 2.6 of the Annex 2 of our Constitution and Bylaws. The Supervising Council shall conduct an investigation if there is a suspicion that an animal does not abide by the Constitution and Bylaws or upon receiving an official request. As such, the SAPCO should open an investigation on its own without any input from external parties since we can all agree that the allegations and alleged discrimination and anti-democratic processes are compatible with our core values.
again for us is not to about for us is not about rejecting our and our proposals it is about justice it is about democracy it is about the very foundation of our federation and the core values we are rooted in and we advocate for and as long as their, uh, these allegations are properly investigated and this situation is properly addressed we will be more than satisfied Despite the fact that this has been a very long and stressful GA, we hope that all issues raised will find a solution in peaceful cooperation and we continue to be encouraged and developed between NMOs and DBTO. And we thank everyone for their hard work during this challenging virtual General Assembly. We hope to see all of you in person in Panama this August. Until, until then, we send you a big virtual hug. Thank you for your attention. See you in Italy. Thank you, Susan. Now we have IFMC Egypt. IFMC Egypt. Still muted. Um, IFMC Egypt, are you here? Otherwise, we'll go with the next key that is running now. Which is here. We have just accepted her, if I'm not wrong. Uh, I think yeah. Egypt. Are you ready? Yes, thank you. My internet was a bit unstable. Um, okay, you can go. Dear Arthur's APAP, as we come to an end of three weeks of hard work, discussions and decision making within this OGA, we remain as proud as, as ever of IFMSA for being an organization able to unite medical students across the globe in an event of this magnitude and impact. It is truly a reflection of how medical students have prioritized being active global citizens. And despite a pandemic that has not made it any easier, would still show up daily for hours on end to take part in pivotal discussions for the future of IFMSA. As we conclude our last plenary, there is no time more suitable to look at this experience from a reflective and holistic perspective. For an organization with the impact, size, and diversity of IFMSA, it is crucial that we all serve with a reflective mindset, continuously self-assessing and challenging the status quo and the long-standing structures. It is also essential to have a mindset of sustainability, striving for long-term solutions to the challenges we face over short-term suggestions that will not guarantee such challenges will not recur. The increasing load of administrative tasks the executive board continuously has to deal with may not allow them sufficient time, space, or energy to continuously do that. And while many of our elected officials come with such intentions, their demanding workloads remain beyond most expectations. We find it important to remind animals to always reflect thoroughly and prioritize sustainable reflective mandates when adding to the officials workload. It is even more important to remind animals of their role and responsibilities towards IFMSA, that animals themselves are accountable to actively partake in this process, to sometimes initiate and take matters into their own hands. Dear animals, you are stakeholders of this organization and it will not develop and flourish without your commitment to that process. As the generation that lives in a revolutionary time of access to open communication, it is only necessary that we prioritize efficient communication as hard as it may be in this online setting. We have seen many situations during this GA that we believe could have been approached with more efficient communication. Many decisions that were not made because we were unable to communicate them as we wished and topics brought up in manners lacking involvement in ways we had acknowledged during the previous OGA August meeting as not ideal. We remind animals that as part of upholding IFMSA values and principles to ensure we exert the utmost effort in effectively communicating. IFMSA's backbone is capacity building and we would like this to serve as a reminder that capacity building is not just for our young members. Investing in the capacity building of our leadership is essential because as animal presidents as leaders, we are the decision-making makers within IFMS AGAs. Over the past few years, 
capacity building initiatives targeted towards animal presidents and EBs have been decreasing, and this will eventually reflect on their awareness and participation. With the rapid turnover we are seeing in IFMSA, we must once more have this as a priority. We would like to finally ask EB, TO, and animals to all have an internal focus on making our organization safe to all members and a space that values the mental health of all those serving it. Let us invest in IFMSA internally as much as we invest in our activities and impact. Normalize conversations around mental health and safe spaces and make sure no one struggles in silence and that IFMSA is inclusive to all. Finally, we'd like to take this opportunity to thank everyone who has made this OGA possible. EB, TO, Chairperson and Plenary Team, CCC, SEPCO, IT, Sessions Team, Online Support Teams, NMOs and their members, and everyone in between. All your efforts are what made this phenomenal event possible. We applaud you and are grateful for bringing us together despite the global pandemic. We'd like to also congratulate the EB elect and wish them all the best of luck leading the Federation. Until we, meet, until we meet again, hopefully in person, soon, hugs and warmth from the land of the pharaohs. Thank you. Thank you, I have Miss Egypt. Um, and before we continue with uh, Miss South India, uh, just as a point of information, I am getting some emails regarding statements, but they are not recorded. I mean, they are not in the speakers list. So uh, in case you still want to also speak uh, in somewhere in between, uh, just raise your hand and I will include you. Uh, next one is I have Miss South India. I hope my voice is clear to you all. Yep. Dear IFMSA family, we find this statement made on behalf of the team of officials incredibly offensive. You, the team of officials who are people in positions of power in this federation, have completely discounted our experiences and struggles. By naming the supporting NMO's, NMO's empathy for us as a white savior complex, you have reduced us again to tokenistic pieces. It is hard enough that we were already being used for tokenistic purposes in our own country. But for the sake of having to work over time, you tried to use the color of skin as a cause of as a cause to attack. Being a past colonized state ourselves and still finding the remnants of the colonial mindset in our society and having to put up with the discrimination of it in our, our current NMO. We find the accusation from the team of officials to the supporting NMOs as deeply offensive. And as such, we would like to protest against your words in the strongest possible terms. We reiterate we from the south of India are deeply offended that you comment on something you barely understand. Your statement was misleading in a number of ways. Firstly, you pointed out that the TO have been in contact with us since before our candidature. We would like to point out that the fact the present VPM and RD Asia Pacific refused to answer our official modes of communication before our candidature. And secondly, after submission of our candidature, the RD Asia Pacific in his call with us had made it clear to us that tokenistic representation is still representation in IFMSA. And he will continue to advocate for the present NMO, even with knowing about all the problems of discrimination and racism we have faced. Please look through the recording of the meeting to find proof. So please excuse us when we are unsure of the VPM and RD Asia Pacific mediating the differences between the current NMO and us without a biased view, without the mandate. We find it ludicrous that the current NMO from India having made multiple statements mentioning their full support of any investigation that will be put forth by the Federation has changed it, its outlook yesterday. When an actual mandate was put forth, it cited established processes within the NMO as a mechanism to overcome these challenges and hence was against an investigation. I believe all our allegations we have made with proof is enough to say without the mandate for investigation, the status quo of discrimination and racism is still going to be maintained. Everyone mentioned their mental health to be taken into account. We also would like to uh, would like the Federation to consider our mental health and the mental health of nearly 150,000 students of the South of India, accounting for nearly half the medical student population of India. This candidature process has already taken its toll and severely affected our mental health, especially to the officials of IFMS South India undergoing exams due to having to fight against discrimination and having to prove our reason to exist in this federation and never being consulted by the EBTO of IFMSA for any allegations made against us. 
apart from this each act of racism and discrimination against the dreams of medical students of south india by a nepotistic organization takes a toll on all of us and makes us lose hope and respect for the system so again i would like to remind you if you want to blame someone using a self realization tool as an attack i would suggest you to take a good look at how neo colonialistic your attack turns out to be in regards to the statements made yesterday we would like to give our utmost thanks to amsa austria cis italy and all other supporting enemies for not looking the other way and fighting for equality even when it is uncomfortable we realize although all enemies were not present we still had a majority and for only that reason our hope in this federation was restored we real we realize we are not enemies of this amazing federation at present but we hope to come back stronger next ga but until then we ask you for your support for an official investigation into the current nmo of india because that becomes the only process we trust to break this unfair cycle of systemic racism and discrimination at the end we would like to remind all nmos that if you are complacent with the status quo you are also complicit in the structural racism and inequality that the status quo hides thank you all for this okay um before we proceed um we are getting a lot of harsh words being said in a lot of statements it's not just that i say si it's meant for a lot of previous speakers as well uh, i remind you to just be respectful it is your right to say a lot of different things but remember everything that is also included in those statements and that your words have a lot of meaning to the people they are directed to and they have a very high effect on them as well so just put yourselves in the shoes of those people towards whom you're directing those statements and if there is an opportunity to remove such words remove such expressions please try to do so there are many ways to express your concerns express everything and um I cannot and the plenary team cannot moderate every single statement uh, and read everything right now and just like you know you have to remove this or that it is up to everyone to understand and how that works and uh, how to do it if you're unsure we are of course there to support you and uh, possibly if you believe that your statement might have been harsh or not and you would like to know in the future how you can make it more of a non-violent uh, communication methods uh, please let us know we can support you afterwards and talk about this and as it was mentioned in one of the statements it is about capacity building also about leadership and you as leaders of tenemos also uh, sometimes need a little bit of support in different directions and uh, speaking and non-violent communication is something that we all learn over time Uh, so this is not directed to any single one of statements it is directed to all statements and this is my request that I had at the beginning of the plenary so uh, I do not want us to end now in a bad manner okay. so msa india you next thank you so much for giving us the floor uh, can you confirm if i'm audible you are you are okay thank you. Thank you so much, Purva Prabha Patel, President of MSI India. Uh, dear NMOs, our MSI officials, uh, observers, and everybody watching uh, right now. First and foremost, we would like to thank all those involved in the discussions pertaining to our NMO over the past couple of weeks. The many conversations I've had and been a part of uh, have certainly been food for thought and have inspired me in more ways than I, I thought was possible. On behalf of my uh, on behalf of my NMO, as we come to the end of this long GA period. We would like to remind NMOs to reflect on and carry forward with us the conversation on membership follow-up committee. The situation we found ourselves in is one that a number of NMOs can find their, themselves in in the future, and we hope that a set standard of procedure is followed so history doesn't repeat itself. And the involved NMOs are scrutinized on the basis of verified facts and proofs, and the procedure has similar standards for all of us. We are happy to share that we will be reflecting on our internal processes in the upcoming NGA. addressing all the concerns that were raised in the past few weeks with our entire team we do not take any form of discrimination lightly and will act on them like we have but we can only but i would like to reiterate that we can only do so if we receive a complaint which we never received before the candidate came in and we received through the course of the email due, uh, through emails that came in during the course of the ga 
Meanwhile, we'll also be talking to the RD, uh, Asia Pacific and the VPM in the upcoming duration to discuss the concerns raised, fact check, and liaise with the involved parties on a tangible course of action. We hope to further build our capacities as an NMO and constructly, constructively work towards realizing the wish, vision, mission, and reflecting the core values of IFMSA in India. As we mentioned yesterday, NMOs form the building blocks of this federation. And while we strongly believe in holding each NMO accountable, including our own, we hope that internal processes of NMOs are not disrespected in the process and that we continue to make decisions carefully based on verified evidence and facts like our med medical education teaches us. We would also like to reiterate that we've been and always uh, we've been and always are open to constructive dialogues with all NMOs at any point for clarification, suggestions, and discussions. Um, for any questions uh, that NMOs may have can be raised to us over our current mechanisms of working. But nothing can be achieved without adequate communication and discussion, which is what we also see happen over the past couple of days. Lastly, but most importantly, over the course of this GA, we have heard the word mental health at least 100 times, if not more. I forget when we are in unfavorable situations or circumstances. MSI India has an EB of seven people. Due to unanticipated changes in the exam schedules in light of COVID-19, four out of seven EB members have been writing their final year uh, medical exams over the past few weeks during also the course of the GA, leaving the other three EB members, including myself, with the help of TO members and alumni to take over the increased NMO responsibilities, which has almost doubled nationally, while also handling while also handling the responsibilities of this GA. And this in addition to hospital duties, classes, and upcoming events. Having been in a situation like this, we urge the NMOs to take into consideration the mental health of parties involved in a string of allegations like the one we just experienced. Such instances, unfortunately, have started to make home in IFMS GAs, and we are alarmed by this trend, to say the least. We call upon NMOs to constructively discuss, discuss how allegations like the ones that we've been seeing over the past couple of weeks could be addressed and appreciate any input that uh, anybody from the NMOs or the officials could have to take this forward. In the same breath, we would like to bring back to this conversation the importance of taking into consideration the very different time zones we are all in while we continue to have these conversations. A number of NMOs, especially within Asia Pacific and, and the Global South, have attended sessions at ungodly hours with limited physical and mental strength. And we hope that's taken into consideration should we find ourselves holding online or hybrid events again. We hope that the mental health of officials and NMO representatives alike becomes more than just two words that we keep saying all the time and starts to reflect through our actions towards each other. Finally, we sincerely and wholeheartedly thank the IFMSA EVTO, SUBCO, plenary team, and the CCC for the relentless effort in hosting IFMSA's second ever online general assembly. Thank you. Thank you. And then we have RD Asia Pacific. Not dear sure NMOs. who's behalf of this. Yes. Here yes. Uh, dear NMOs, we would like to thank South Indian Medical Students Association, SIMSA, for their hard work and unwavering commitment thus far, and appreciate their efforts to be continuously involved in IFMSA processes. As regional director, it is my responsibility to serve and work for the national member organizations of the IFMSA Asia Pacific region. With regards to SIMSA, the VP, IFMSA VPM and I have done this to the best of our abilities from December 1 until now and have acted in line with the bylaws and recommendations from our predecessors from our handover. We have attended to the requests and given all relevant information to the applying organization particularly after our realization of their application only after their general secretary submission. Each NMO has its shortcomings and hence why we have such a strong emphasis on NMO development in IFMSA capacity building and have supported NMO improvement, supporting NMO improvement as a strong pillar of our federation. With the belief in effective communication channels and dialogues, this recommendation was strongly highlighted to both parties from the nascency of the RD's involvement in the situation to mitigate it on a national level. We would like to thank AMSA Austria and System Italy to engage in a dialogue on this issue. The mandate for us to work on the ongoing issue as it pertains to the organizations in India is well intended, but does pose logistical challenges for the implementers to follow through with it to ensure that the issue is addressed appropriately 
and may even prevent friendly communications of relevant parties in the future. This is why moving forward, the IFMSA VPM and myself will move forward with the proposed timeline as displayed during the plenary yesterday, even without the adoption of the proposed mandate. We will work with the current animal representing India, MSI India, as well as SIMSA via official modes of communication. The formal consultation for mediation has already begun. Due to the fact that we are hoping for a fruitful and orderly dialogue between the organizations, myself and the IFMSA VPM will choose not to respond to the comments that have just been leveled against us because we believe that the focus must be on dialogue now. Should SIMSA move forward with an application for IFMSA membership for subsequent General Assembly meetings, I pledge that I will follow through with this request and see it through as per the usual protocol of membership application with my general assistant. Additional efforts of mediating conversations between the current NMO and the applying NMO will also be provided as it has been offered and conducted since last year preceding my term as regional director for Asia Pacific. With this, I further call on NMOs to work on addressing issues of representation within their national and local structures and to consider the shortcomings of bylaws regulations concerning the membership structures so that we can balance the need for equal representation and the protection of internal development of the current NMOs. It is with this I also call for further support with the establishment and the function of the membership follow-up committee led by the IFMSA VPM and to help in elucidating definitions and limitations of animal autonomy in the future. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact me. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ali Pacific. And next, we have IFM Quebec. IFM Quebec, thank you. Dear animals, it has been one year since the beginning of the pandemic and as we grieve the one we lost and reflect on the profound changes it had in our societies and health systems, it is also essential to raise awareness on a growing issue resulting from the COVID-19 pandemic, namely anti-Asian racism. At the end of February 2021 in Australia, two masked men attacked the father and his son in their own home with machetes. This violence resulting in a literal bloodbath in the victim's home was purely motivated by anti-Asian racism that has spiked alarmingly over the last year. Unfortunately, events of this nature aren't isolated instances. They have been witnessed all around the world as Asians and people of Asian descent have been facing hate speech and crimes, verbal and physical violence, vandalism of their homes and businesses, as well as various other forms of racism, xenophobia, and derogatory language in media reports and statements issued by politicians. In Canada alone, we have witnessed a surge of 30% of hate crimes targeting the Asian community in Montreal, a spike of 57% in Ottawa and 97 in Vancouver. Last May, a South Korean Korean researcher was stabbed in Montreal streets. In the few months following this tragic incident, Canada was home to more than 800 crimes specifically targeted towards Asian Canadians and related to the COVID-19 pandemic. In the United States, as of 2020, hate crimes have risen by 150% in 16 cities. Asian communities are being targeted worldwide, but we as an international community have stayed unaware and unconsciously silenced about the suffering and violence inflicted upon Asians and people of Asian descent. In an era where humanity, compassion, and solidarity are crucial to help us go through those difficult times, Asians and people of Asian descent have to suffer the double burden of facing the pandemic, as well as the marginalization and brutalization of their communities. Moreover, the voicing of these communities' concern is significantly silenced because of the model minority myth, giving the impression that Asian communities do not face the do not face racism to the same extent as other minorities. This creates a divide in movement advocating for BIPOC, Black, Indigenous, and people of color's rights, furthering the isolation and silencing of Asian communities throughout the spike of the violence they face. Now more than ever, we call upon every animal to question how the pandemic has affected Asian communities in their own countries, to raise awareness on anti-Asian racism and advocate for them throughout their social networks. We also need to create safe spaces and environments for our Asian members and members of Asian descent to process and express the violence they witness towards them and their community. Furthermore, we need to encourage internal action so they can feel supported, valued, and loved in their student organization and society. Examples include hosting an open space discussion, organizing a public panel discussion, writing a call to action, or supporting Asian-owned businesses. To our Asian members and members of Asian descent, IFMSA Quebec, CFMS Canada, and AMSA Australia, 
would like to express their continued support towards you. We are shocked and deeply saddened by the extent of violence targeting Asian communities and engage ourselves in raising awareness and advocating against anti-Asian racism. We would like to take the time to voice how valued and appreciated members you are of our organizations and that we will stand alongside you. Sincerely, IFMS Quebec, CFMS Canada, and AMSA Australia. Thank you. And next, we got online support team. Yes, always Daniel. Uh, dear delegates, dear session teams, dear plenary team, dear chair and vice chair, dear officials. On behalf of the OGA online engagement and support team, we would say thank you to each and every one of you. You took the opportunity to unite with other students from all over the world. Thank you for your participation in all our social events, online platforms, and for submitting roll call videos and cultural show videos. You made this online general assembly a place for discussions, a place to connect with each other, a place to learn from each other, and a place to show that we can work on the future of the largest student organization. So again, from all of us, these past few weeks have been incredibly motivating and engaging weeks, even though they were online. We are looking forward to meeting you in person in Panama. So thank you from Amine, IFMSA, WPPRC, Carla from IFMSA Panama, Carmen from IFMSA Peru, Ebuka from NIMSA Nigeria, Ashra from MSAI India, Kartikeya from MSAI India, Malas from Medicine Sudan, Masood from, P from PMSA Palestine, and from me, Daniel from AMSA Austria. Thank you very much. And we have Ms. Obama next. Okay, so we'll be chairing with the, the number of cell. She's going to start the statement. Thank you. So, uh, Victoria speaking from the name Brazil here. Uh, this statement is on behalf of the Americas region, on behalf of 14 countries. So, the year FMSA completed seven years of history, engagement, and activities that were all possible with teamwork. We, as animals from, from the Americas region, want to redline a extremely dedicating situation that has been persistent. The lack of cohesion and comprehension with our voices and participation. We are extremely disappointed and frustrated size hits should be a safe and inclusive space, and we feel it has not been. We are extremely saddened and disappointed with the lack of communication, active participation, and responsible understanding during the discussion made during the plenary and president sessions. The America's social, economic, social, economic, and political situation are extremely different from other regions, which is a reflection of a big history background. We must not separate our countries and regions' backgrounds from our animals, size us, and our people suffering, suffering the consequences of it. These disparities must be taken into consideration and be discussed within the FMSA, but sadly, we felt that they had, that they have not been. More than quality, we are asking for equity. During this day, we traded our love for advocacy, network experience, and relationships for lack of engagement and arguments leading to uncomfortable scenarios where issues were, were wrongly addressed, causing wormful consequences. Moreover, we felt that some decisions, interventions, mandates, partnerships, and discussions only benefit animals that are already privileged. This created every more disparities than there already are. We must never forget that not everyone has the same opportunities and struggle, financially and socially speaking. 
Our beloved and enormous region has diverse time zones that extend through GMT minus three to GMT minus 10. During, due to this, we received countless emails during off hours for the Americas and has greatly affected our performance during this OGA. Also, we encountered ourselves losing a lot of time in prolonging unnecessary, unnecessarily some, but not all, discussions on politics rather than on health and medical education issues related to each region and how we should be supporting each animal and their internal problems. We would also like to express our disappointment regarding the way some comments were made during discussions in the event and via email, especially about the manner of expression of some representatives towards others. One of the main values of the Federation is respect and collaboration between countries to work for health at a global level together. So we felt disheartened to see this type of inappropriate behavior. With this statement, we deeply hope we can all together take a step back, work hand in hand and establish a new and fresh, and fresh conjoint journey for the Federation we deeply love and care about. Thank you all for your attention. The number still, IFMSA Panama, AMSA USA, Odem Dominican Republic, JAMSA Jamaica, IFMSA Brazil, Fedes Ocean Venezuela, ASEM Costa Rica, IFMSA Peru, IMP Ecuador, IFMSA Honduras, IFMSA Chile, IFMSA Quebec, IFMS and IFMSA Argentina on behalf of the Americas region. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Zoom, IFMSA Panama. And we have ex Catalonia next. Can you hear me? Yep. Ex Catalonia here. Okay. Dear IFMSA family, dear NMOs, EB, TO, subco, plenary team, sessions team, support persons, and any, any other individuals participating in March meeting 21. This statement is on behalf of Ix Catalonia, Associate Med Tunisia, GMSA Georgia, BBMD Germany, F FASMER Romania, AMSA Hong Kong, IFMSA Panama, QMSA Qatar, IMCC Denmark, LEMSIC Lebanon, SWIMSA Switzerland, Helmsic Greece, and in Portugal, IFMSA Czech Republic, IFMSA Spain, and AMSA Austria. After two and a half long and intense weeks, we faced the last day of the 70th March meeting. We'd like to take this opportunity to reflect our gratitude for all of your efforts into making this GA a success. Times have been difficult. One year ago, one year ago, no one could have predicted that we would have successfully had two consecutive online general assemblies by today. To the EBTO, this marks the middle of your term. While we recognize that you have faced challenges, especially in terms of workload, COVID-19, lack of physical meetings and mental health, we hope that you also recognize your achievements. You are contributing to the development of our federation. Today, 141 NMOs stand before you, continu continuing to trust your leadership because of your unwavering commitment to improvement while upholding I IFMSA's values, such as transparency, diversity, and accountability throughout your work. You all are representing the federation with diligence and remarkable professionalism setting standards for the IFMSA to thrive. We want you to know that our role as governing body and members often requires us to be highly critical, to demand transparency as it can never be enough, and to be skeptical depending on the situation. However, that does not mean that we do not trust you and maybe we do not show enough how much we value the, advance the advancement advancements that you bring to the IFMSA. Even so, we appreciate all of your work and the time and energy you put into your position. To the plenary team, Nevosha, Blanca, Omar, Alamin, Hussam, Randa, Serena, Fatima, Kenneth, and Camila, to the CCC, Haider, Gita, Angela, Sania, and Edzgi, you deserve all the recognition for running nine smooth plenaries, even though sometimes difficulties arose and plenaries lasted longer than expected, you managed to keep the highest authority and decision-making body of the Federation. It must not have been easy to organize plenaries in a virtual setting. A big thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Finally, we would like to take this moment to wish the best of luck to the EBTO for the second half of their term, especially with something as exciting as creating a new strategy proposal and the EB elect on the new thrilling journey that lies ahead of them 
We send you a great deal of energy and success for the upcoming adventure. We believe both of you will guide us further towards global health, meaningful youth engagement, and much more. We cannot stress our gratitude enough for the past two and a half weeks of hard work, document revision, patience, and support. We hope to meet again in August, hopefully in Panama, fingers crossed, with our energies restored and ready to tackle new challenges together. 70 years later, we are so very proud of being part of this federation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alex, and all the other animals. Statement, we are moving now to CCC. Dear NMOs, dear EB and TO, dear plenary participants, it has been an, our honor to be the members of the CCC this March meeting 2021. The past three weeks have taught us that online plenaries are difficult. So as we are at the end, we would like to congratulate all those who made this wonderful event happen and all the members who participated actively through Zoom calls or online streams, irrespective of the time zone. We have deeply missed meeting each other, members of the CCC in person. Typically in physical GAs, you could meet with the CCC members in the sitting area of the lobby during the day and at the CCC tables during the plenaries. We have missed interacting with each other and with other IFMSA members, members in such way. We hope that we have been able to catch up on the demands of an online plenary and be there to answer all the queries in the required time frame of this GA. We hope you have had time to go through the CCC report. We urge that in the time period between the GAs, our recommendations are looked upon. We spend several hours drafting those recommendations to avoid complicated situations in the future, and we would be grateful if they were taken into account, into consideration and discussed further between the EB and the NMOs. During this GA meeting, there have been five bylaws paragraph suspensions. We would like to address this situation with this statement. It is highly advisable that bylaws paragraphs are not suspended during any plenary of general assembly meetings. The IFMSA constitution and bylaws have been formed and reformed by our predecessors for years now. And there is a reason why each and every paragraph looks the way it looks. Thus, we feel that complying with the constitution and bylaws is a way to honor and respect our predecessors, their work and our federation. However, if NMOs at any time feel like some paragraphs are not meaningful or feasible, they should be discussing this thoroughly and consider bylaws change, change proposals to make a more sustainable change instead of just suspending the bylaws paragraphs. There needs to be a conversation, brainstorming and solutions found to map and analyze which bylaws paragraphs are commonly suspended and why. We hope that in the next GA meeting, the number of bylaws suspensions can be significantly reduced. In the upcoming General Assembly meeting, we hope to see that bodies of IFMSA, such as the EB and SAPCO, fur further advocate for the judici judicious use of the procedural motions to suspend the bylaws paragraphs. Thank you, your Hyder. Uh, your, sorry, your CCC, Gita, Haider, Eski, Sania, and Angelo. Thank you, CCC. Uh, we have Tio next. Yes, um, dear animals, uh, the mental health and well being of IFMSA officials and the international teams have been an exponentially growing challenge over the past years. Although the different bodies and members of the Federation raised their voices over the years to highlight the issue, this commitment has not been translated into concrete and measurable steps or actions to promote the health of our leadership. A task force was previously established in August meeting 2019 in Taiwan, which consisted of four members after two calls were opened. The task force was mandated to assess the mental health status of IFM 
FSA officials, international teams, and program coordinators, and use the collective data to develop specific preventative measures. And due to the challenges stated in the report, the expected outcomes of this task force were sadly not achieved. The importance of mental health has been raised in our federation for many years. We continue to raise awareness and advocate through campaigns and initiatives at all levels, while we tend to neglect our own mental health and well-being. As medical students worldwide, we can be so creative when it comes to our work with others. So let's fuel that creativity within us as well and innovate how we can improve our own mental health and well-being. We really appreciate all the efforts to shed light on the matter and highlight the importance of mental health and well-being. Throughout the GA, several animals have delivered statements to emphasize its importance. Yet, we believe that it is crucial to go beyond only talking about it during our general assemblies and instead find sustainable and concrete solutions. However, we believe it is saddening that some recommendations and proposals that were presented during this GA meeting and that were aimed at alleviating some of the mental health burdens on officials were not discussed or sufficiently reflected prior to not adopting them. These ranged from our suggestions on various mandates to concrete proposals aiming to improve the mental health of the team of officials. We respect that these are the decisions that animals made, yet in the end, they might have negative repercussions on the TO's mental health. The GA is the highest decision-making body in IFMC, and it is also expected to be held accountable to ensure the improvement of the overall mental health situation of this federation. Changing organizational culture is never easy. In IFMC history, we never really had a systemic approach to launch initiatives on such topics, particularly mental health, even in the TO. A safe space for mental health needs to be constructed and renovated rather than being just protected. Yet the approaches and the processes to tackle mental health issues should not be in themselves an added mental health burden to our federation. With efforts from both the TO and the animals and by recognizing the shortfalls in our current working mechanism, as a start, we can all begin to be the change we want to see by being open-minded and most importantly, collaborative. Thank you on behalf of that team of officials, I from the team of officials. Thank you. So <clears throat> upon um, a specific request, we're gonna have I from the president go next and then I will be last. Thank you, Nabosha. Dear animals and dear officials, this statement is on my own behalf, but also to both of the big group and the backbone of our federation. I think we all agree that online GA makes animal representation easier, but we have to always think about are we aiming at equality or equity. Coming from a region that is quite quiet in most of the places and in the history of IFMSA, we know how to perceive information and how to express properly when we have things to say. As the IFMSA president who was elected in the last physical GA, I see this as an honor, but I see this also a responsibility to remind us what is the value of a general assembly meeting. Since the beginning of this GA or when we are preparing for this GA meeting, we read through many reports, submissions. One of them aroused our attention and somehow interest. From the report of Sakol, there were some of the investigations when it involved many information that cannot be unfolded or shared yet to the animals. That is not a unique situation in FMSA. Many information we were not able to be shared and were not, be, not able to be presented at all times, even with the agreement of the re relevant bodies. We are always living up with one side or partial information. It is not realistic to pursue 
the true truth. Truth is made by what you believe and what you process with the information you have. Dear animals, I understand that there were some statements either from the TO, either from the animal presidents are making this space not comfortable or not safe to you in the past few periods. And as the president and the leader of the team of officials, I want to apologize on my personal behalf that we as the officials indeed should abide by a higher standard. But I also want to point out that we are humans. TO members are human. Animal presidents are human. Members are human. As a three-term TO members, I made a lot of mistake as RD and also as president. And I got chances to reflect and amend myself. That's what also needed in this very situation. Officials are making mistakes. Perhaps they say something inappropriate or incorrect, but I stand behind them that they have also the right to express because every TO statement requires at least a half of the TO members and an active consent that this statement to be expressed. Being human, the TO members, we have emotions and that emotions can accumulate quickly. You don't know how the TO Telegram group rolls and messages spamming fast in the past few days. This is a alert to, to all of us, to members and also to us team of officials, especially team of officials. That emotion needs to be properly managed. This online general assembly, it provides an easier platform for everyone to, to say and to easily show their facial expression on the screen because that usually is not presented in the physical QA. And also side notes being sent in the small box or the chats or the WhatsApp, private WhatsApp group. If we cannot avoid having emotions in our work, we need to avoid being driven by the emotions itself. This is a lesson that I need to learn and I hope my team of officials will also learn and reflect after this. Dear animals, we do recommend and we do welcome that if you have any recommendation or suggestions to our work. But as the leader of this team of official, I reject any hypothesis or wrong accusation based on one side information or partial information that saying some of my officials all my colleagues are not working properly. They are working impressively, especially in this era of time. I won't call on their name because I have closing ceremony to introduce them again, but I stand behind them and I want to defend for them that nobody deserves being treated like this. Animals, you hold the power to make the decision and you form the highest decision-making bodies in FMSA doesn't mean that the decisions cannot be held accountable. Every plenary and mostly the sessions are projected and live streaming in YouTube. Our members are watching, our stakeholders are watching, our alumni are watching. I say this year, we are proud of our 70 years of history that it's somehow not realistic or it doesn't make sense to myself because that has nothing to do with ourselves. They are our predecessors, but seems like we didn't really learn from them. In the real world, meaningful youth participation might mean presence, pre presenting there and having the speaking rights. But in IFMSA, when we keep saying meaningful participation, meaningful intervention, it also involves listening, active listening from your heart and from with your wisdom and all the goodwill and nice issues that you want to deal with. 70 years of IFMSA, it is a long history, starting from only limited European animals that thank them for making this possible so we can expand and grow afterward. 
70 years, 70 years of mistakes, disagreement, conflicts, and perhaps gossip, dramas, rumors, and people being hurt. But this is also the 70 years of reflections, amendments, networking, friendliness, and improvement. When we are reviewing the history, the most important thing is to learn from the history. I can be a history people in FMSA. Half a year afterward, I'm no longer having a speaking rights here. But if we are together in this OGA, we are making the history together and we need to be careful how we want to be remembered by the next TO, the next animal president, when they're reviewing the minutes, when they're reviewing what decision we made, how we made the decisions, and how the chairperson and the plenary team was messed up with all the on and work back and forth procedures. We need to start from the very fundamental part. Mental health could be it. Lead our bylaws could be it. We also need to be honest that having all the discussions and decisions made solely in the General Assembly period is not healthy. We don't have enough time to reflect, enough time to process the information, and that causes negative emotions. I want to end this very long and boring statement by saying that I know many of us are not very happy with this, with this overall situation, but we cannot change what has been made or what has been said, but we can change the way we deal with such issues from the next minute and from now. I invite you, every single one of you in every country, every region, whatever colors your skin reflect under the sunlight or in your mind, whatever gender you want to be, whatever professionals who are working, either you are medical or non-medical students, there were disagreement and we live with disagreements, but we need to respect that fact and respect the fact that we are humans and we need to allow people to grow in different speed and different pace in this federation because our federation is not for achievement. It's for the members growth and members sense of belongings. That does make it. Thank you very much. And by saying thank you very much, I mean thank you, each of you, by attending the whole plenary, whole sessions since late February, and the sense of professional that you reflect throughout the period. I also want to specifically send EB and the plenary team for their like timely reply to whatever unexpected situation. They deserve a big round of applause if we can make it now. I think it would be good, but let us remember that we do have a right to choice and we choose the way we want ourselves to be. Thank you very much. I yield the floor back to you, Nebosha. Thank you, Mr. President, for that lovely statement. And I regret not giving you the floor to be the last one, but you will end up in a closing ceremony. So I think we're all sorted out with that. <laughs> Okay, uh, so I'm the last one on the speakers list, and well, you've been speaking a lot, not only in this plenary, but all in the, all the other ones in the past 17 days, and I've been patiently listening to all of you and supporting all of you, so I hope that you can listen also to my long, little bit longer address, uh, as it has a lot of points that I would like to share with you. Dear NMOs, Dear officials, dear participants of the March meeting 2021 online general assembly, dear spectators of a YouTube stream. I believe that every closing address of the general assembly meeting chairperson needs to begin with the acknowledgement of their plenary team. The chairperson will always be in the spotlight, but that does not mean that they're acting alone. My chair team, Alamin, Hosam, Randa, Serena, Fatima, Kenneth, Camila, Omar, and Blanca, we're there to ensure that every address to the General Assembly was conducted in the same manner throughout the past 17 days. Their initiatives and observations past their positions 
have immensely contributed to the proper functioning of this General Assembly meeting. My role in coordinating, coordinating their work, as you could hear from the statement, was much easier knowing how confident they are in their roles, and I could dedicate myself to the issues brought up in front of the General Assembly. I do need to give extra credit to some of them. To Omar, who led the secretary team, ensuring all of your elaborate interventions and motions will forever be recorded in the minutes of this General Assembly meeting, but more than that, worked on accurate presentation of all proceedings and participated in all of our discussions about them. When in the past I was tasked with pre-selecting vice chairperson, I always maintained that IFMSA needs to have full confidence that this person can take over the chairperson duties at any moment. Planka and I worked on all plenary procedures together and aligned our views on them so that in case I am indisposed, you could be confident it is not affecting the proceedings. You saw and heard her patiently explain Nemo vote functioning and guiding you on how to vote while doing what is at the same time the most urging and calming countdown, which always brought in a few extra votes. What you didn't see is her support for all other standing committee and regional plenaries that happened since her election. Your dedication to ensure the same standards apply to all of them and help your decision making. I'm sad that the plenary agenda did not in a way allow us to switch positions so she would chair for some time herself. However, I'm confident that she will do a terrific job if she's given the opportunity to lead her plenary team one day. The picture of an all in their email truly represents the ones we always refer to as CCC, and I'm sure they'll dream of those three letters for a while still, even right now in this day. They have always been there for us, no matter who from them replied, Esgi, Kita, Haider, Tifo, or Sanya, you were greeted with a comprehensive and clear response for all the questions asked for the CCC. The decisions came after a lot of deliberation and in-depth review of all documents available. A lot of the procedures that came up from discussions outside the plenaries or during plenaries would not occur without their involvement and support. You never want to be invited to a CCC meeting, especially as a chairperson. That was the start of a lot of interesting discussions, to say the least. We complemented each other well in ensuring the accuracy of plenary proceedings. Thank you for letting some of the point of order slide. I'm not sure who would win that competition. No role is too small in a plenary team, and they were all indispensable members of it. I hope they will approach their future work in IFMSA and beyond with the same vigor and determination that they showcased here. You will be more than satisfied to have them as their co-workers in the future. I can only express my gratitude for everything they have done and wish them the best of luck in the future endeavors. Thank you as well to the IFMSA team officials for your support in planning and executing this general assembly. Thank you all participants for respecting the guidelines we agreed on and helping improve them. As for myself, well, when you first attend a general assembly meeting, you remember two people quite well, the official leading your sessions and the chairperson. I now got the privilege to be both of those. Thank you once again for putting your trust in me. Being a chairperson is a lot more fun than I thought it would be, even in an online setting. Neutrality in decisions is not a bad thing. With every new opportunity I get and contribution to make life on the stage, I always remember that first time I heard silence in the room. I think I need to practice it for next time if it happens. And how much has changed since then for me? IFMS empowers its members in so many ways, and it will always be one of the primary reasons for my engagement. I hope that you have enjoyed the plenary proceedings in this meeting, not because of their duration and these long speeches, but because I always aim to ensure that everything was thoroughly explained, presented, and conducted so that you would be confident in your every action. More than that, I wish to provide a safe space for anyone to express themselves and take action on behalf of their NMO. IFMS executive board candidates in the March meeting elections are required to have attended only one General Assembly meeting prior to election. We're now finishing a second online General Assembly meeting in a row. It is another one with great representation from all regions in IFMSA. I aim to also provide the opportunity to take action to those NMOs that have difficulties outside of their control to participate in such events. If this pandemic continues, there will be an entire group of NMO representatives and possible leaders in IFMSA that have never attended a physical General Assembly meeting. For all those reasons, education on some of the basics in plenary proceedings was always on my mind. Surely more experience amongst you have found my lengthy speeches that this one tiresome, but even if, even if one of you found it necessary, then it was worth all of our time. I apologize for any and all mistakes made during this time. 
more than once. I found myself having over five completely different parallel discussions I was involved in, but I think we did okay. That brings me to what every chairperson normally does, which is provide recommendations to the General Assembly on how to improve its proceedings in the future. Please listen carefully or read this later over the server as you did during this GA. Every hour of discussing time in a plenary session is not simply one extra hour in a plenary. It is an hour that is not spent resting before a long day at the hospital or enjoying some quality time with friends and family or preparing a healthy meal or exercising or having important discussions about upcoming procedures. Now multiply that by 200 to 300. That is how many people on average dedicate one hour of their life, take part in that hour of the plenary session all at the same time from across the world. Emails, online calls, Discord channels, Google Doc and Sheet comments, WhatsApp or Telegram chat and, chat and any other platform in use in iPhone to say, most importantly as well, the present sessions are not simply optional to use. They're a necessary means of expressing doubts, concerns, suggestions, solving disagreements, preventing misunderstandings, and taking part in the decision-making of IFMSA General Assembly meetings. There is not a single proposal of a soul that will not jump at the opportunity to discuss their proposals with anyone that wants to. More often than not though, they're not asked anything before the General Assembly meeting. Yesterday in plenary 5A, I wanted to directly have you experience what will happen if you don't previously discuss upcoming motions. A debate in the plenary sessions is possible, but it is a last resort for numerous reasons, especially in an online setting. Your vote needs to come after doing your due diligence to be informed on what you're voting for, simply because of the incredible importance it has. Yes, you may simply come to the plenary and vote, but bear in mind the following. A policy guides the way opinions of medical students around the world are expressed in the most important platforms in global health. A memorandum of understanding gives IFMSA the opportunity to work with another impactful organization. A BCP might give IFMSA a new identity as an organization or address concerns of financial sustainability. Or solve the working struggles and many, many more things. A vote for the new member or change of membership in terms of upgrade or removal from IFMSA has serious and undeniable consequences on medical students and other healthcare professionals in particular areas of the world. Budget adoption and changes, as distant as finances may be from medicine, can mean the difference between some organizations staying in IFMSA or not. Adoption of reports shows the acknowledgement for all the hard work and dedication of officials and other bodies presenting their reports throughout the past period. Election of the new leadership in IFMSA well, I'm sure you don't need it said, but they replace you for about 350 days per year. Certainly, you wonder what is my point with all of this. I'm sure you know why the plenary session lasted longer, speeches like this, or how we could vote faster, whether or not procedures were clear, and if not, why not, and so on and on. If I asked you to think of 10 things that went great, 10 that were mediocre, and 10 things that were really bad, and positive, positive that it will take you five minutes to come up with them. Therefore, as you're not afraid to speak when you're not in favor of a proposal, I ask you to not be afraid to express yourselves about the actual process itself. We have the evaluation as a centralized mean of data collection, but also various opportunities during the procedures as well. Informed decision-making involves everything from opening the first call back in November to today, 14th March, and soon the adjournment of this meeting. Did you have issues as a head of delegation with something? Did your delegation? I know you did. But do you also have a fitting solution to those issues? Let us know to reflect on them and provide recommendations for the future. I can claim with certainty that if for years IFMSA has needed five full days or 144 hours with everyone present in person to complete all of its decision-making procedures, it won't suddenly take less just because it is more difficult to do in the online setting. OGA is an event like any other with a high time demand. I don't expect this to change anytime soon, but officials are overworked and every day when they wake up, they know they have to prioritize and choose lesser evil. In other words, what to delay. Or that you as heads of delegation and general delegates do not have duties only towards this event, but also your organizations and many other reasons for FMSAG meetings are definitely not a healthy environment. A change has to start at some point. Step by step, 
The participants of the plenary will not be skipping arguably the best time of physical cheese, the social program, and still go to bed at 5 in the morning only to wake up at 8.50, skip breakfast, and attend their session. Although, I have to admit, one great fact about online General Assembly meetings, it has allowed for the participation of those less privileged to attend in person, as so many regular barriers for participation have been removed. Combined with increased duration during the GA, we have heard so many various topics being open and addressed. I'm very happy to have seen that, but all of this also brings to my final point. If there was a drinking game involving the time mental health is mentioned, a person that I know that can drink 20 beers and be a decent human being, they would be wasted during this game. Don't get me wrong. I think it is magnificent that mental health has been put at the forefront of discussions that I'm say. In a March meeting 20 EB debate, a question was asked to all EB candidates about their availability, and the ones that were never in the theory applied in a way I did also three years ago, that they can change their schedules and academic obligations and dedicate all their time for IFMC, a very typical response for candidates. However, the ones that were in the TO at the time replied saying they would do their best to manage their obligations and desires in life with IFMC obligations. Comparing that to the debate in M21, I saw no less than two questions around mental health for each individual candidate, plus those for all candidates. The questions and replies bring me hope that you all want to work on this topic. I have an idea, one that is an uh, official I could never prioritize. I will be drafting and sharing it with the executive board and executive board elect. It looks into the full scope of the impact of IFMSA on the health and well being of all individuals at the international level and provides the animals with the tools and instructions on how to do that themselves nationally. I say health because try to reflect on the past two weeks. How did you treat your body? I can tell you that if I was now offered an opportunity within my city that had the same working environments as IFMSA, I would not accept it. So why do we accept it in IFMSA? I don't know. This general assembly meeting inspired me to truly bring something back to IFMSA as an alumnus, something that will take time and will have an effect for years to come. I know it inspired you, inspired you as well. Therefore, I ask you to not leave your statements and comments on mental health as words said because they were the right thing to say. Do your part in bringing a change nationally and internationally in regards to the health and well-being of individuals in IFMSA. If we don't aim to do that for ourselves, how can we advocate for, for it at the biggest stages? Let's make another miracle for health, your health. And that was meant to be the end of my address. But with all the statements that were shared earlier, I cannot just proceed to adjournment. You have to say, it, to remind you of one of the objectives of IFMSA as stated in the constitution, providing a link between members medical student associations and international organizations and to encourage the cooperation between them for the ultimate benefit of society. A vote on any matter is the final resort in my view to reach a decision. A tight vote means a lot. It means that there are up to half of members of IFMSA concerned about the matter just voted upon. Dialogue in all matters is the most important point. Nonviolent form of communication is of the utmost importance in all interactions between people. When you enter a dialogue, the only time, quote, winners, end quote, are found is when compromise is made and everyone is involved in a way, satisfied with the outcome. There is nobody in IFMSA that works, quote, more to achieve its vision, mission, and objectives, end quote. You all work together with the same names. Everyone makes mistakes. It is how we reflect on them and grow from them that differentiates us. Never forget that. Thank you for this general assembly meeting and for listening for my final address. Okay. Uh, all right. Thank you all for the support in this statement. And no, you don't need to cry. You just need to take action. So uh, now we are going to proceed with our final point of the agenda. Mark, can you share a screen again? Uh, could you give me just one minute until I record the support for your statement? Okay. 
there is a lot of support. So yeah. <laughs> Okay, actually, the there's so much support that Zoom isn't functioning anymore. So I'm just going to go to the transcript after the, after the plenary. So uh, I'm going to share my screen now. That's a mood. Shame on Zoom. We need to share some love. <laughs> So our final, oh, oh, we do have closing ceremony, but closing ceremony will be happening after. And um, don't share funny emotions, please. So agenda item 48, adjournment of the meeting. Procedural motion number 23, to adjourn the 17th March meeting general assembly 2021, proposed by IFMCAP. Do you want to explain? I am on the behalf of the EV. Uh, hopefully the last time I will see this in the plenary, but thanks everyone for this GA. I just want to uh, explain that we have to vote for this procedural motion, but it is a great honor to for the EV to be here today and here during the last weeks uh, in this GA. So thanks everyone for being in the plenary and uh, hopefully we'll see each other again in Panama. So end with my explanation. <laughs> Thank you. And now we're going to secondaries. And I learned again that there is this tradition that when you are going somewhere later, you want to pick them, but if they don't want to, it's also okay. So our secondary is IFMC Panama. Yes, I have to say Panama seconds this motion. Yes, let's see each other in August. Woo! Yep. Uh, okay, Blanca, what do we say? Do we vote on this or do we ask them for the negative? I mean, it depends on whether they want a final countdown or, countdown or not. <laughs> no, but it depends on you as always. So, yeah. It depends okay. on NMOs. Uh, okay, let's go with the direct negative. Do we have a direct negative? I want them to express it. Okay, uh, who didn't we have for this? Well, we can go with, I don't know, then in Brazil. So you still need to vote. Hi, then in Brazil, one two seconds this motion. Once you give a direct negative, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so blank of whenever you want we're gonna have our final countdown yes okay so i don't know what the results are gonna be but yeah potentially yeah. final mm, it's fine we'll see um okay so i'm gonna open the vote And the vote shall be open now. You shall be able to vote. Let's see, we have 22 animals that have already voted out of 105, 28. Thirty-eight. Forty, 42. Forty-five. Forty six, forty seven, fifty, <clears throat> one 
51. Let's go, people. <laughs> you will have the countdown once we have enough animals that have voted. And since it's an special occasion, I will be having a 10 seconds countdown instead of a five one. <laughs> now we have 57 um, animals that have already voted. And since the last vote, we had around 60, we will be giving 15 more seconds for you to vote. And I will start the countdown in five seconds. So you have 10 seconds to vote, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and I'm closing the vote. Let's see, we have had 60 animals out of 100 and 105 who have voted. And the results are the following ones. We have 55 votes in favor, three against, and two abstentions. Uh, well, with all the mental health stuff and like overflow and so on, um, I can say a bit satisfied that this passes by two thirds majority and that we are uh, done and adjourn, we adjourn the 17th March meeting General Assembly 2021. And that would conclude all of our official proceedings. Now, I ask you also for funny motions. So let's look into those. Okay, uh, well, uh, first thing about funny motions is that there are no rules. You can be creative. And uh, well, let's keep some rules like uh, raise hand. Uh, and voting will be for real 10 seconds, not one plus 10 seconds in Zoom using as yes, uh, this reaction, as no, that other reaction, and as abstain party. Uh, I chose party because when you abstain, it's typically a party in your mind and you don't know what to choose. Point of information from Omar. Yes, thank you, Nibusha. Just confirming that none of this will be mentioned in the minutes following <laughs> the passing of procedural of the last video motion. Yep, we are no longer in the plenary. Like if someone